Ravenbound is a 3D action roguelike from Systemic Reaction that offers unique threads and strands of features, but has difficulty pulling them all into one cohesive title. A game that can feel more confined, like the second part of its name, than free, like the first part would have you imagine. This is Carrick with ACG, and this is my review in progress for Ravenbound. As you know, I buy a copy of every game, even if the dev gives me a code, and I'll give it away to somebody in the comments, a patron, or a YouTube subscriber, so my cash is on the line like yours. Ravenbound's offering is in its initial freedom, the ability to fly anywhere and survey the land, deciding to, at any time, take your life into your own hands and risk it all by plunging to Earth for an enemy engagement as you prepare for the mission objective itself. The game's story is lean, starting you out as a raven able to fly across the world without care, picking and choosing battles, each with an unknown makeup like a bird of prey. The separation of land and sky is phenomenal. The feeling of surviving the land highlighted due also to the sheer speed that you can fly, letting you explore until your heart's content or until you decide to swoop down and fight those enemies. And that's when you take on the guise of the avatar of the raven. Combat is a mix of quick and strong strikes that wick away enemy life and smash through guards in that order, as well as dodges and slides. As you defeat enemies, you pick up resources that let you draw cards from a deck of cards that you hold within your hand. Each card either costs or gives mana and can become relics or armor on your character or even later starting weapons, which is somewhat like classes in Ravenbound. As you engage in each of these battles and learn what works, the biggest issue here is that the enemies are like tanks wrapped in invisible shield that apparently looks like flesh. Taking even the lowliest enemy down isn't about perfect blocking or getting that out of the way, but perfect blocking to get out of the way and slashing the enemy a huge number of times. Times. Herculean is a word reserved for the amount of thick-skinned enemies that you are going to face. Removing the feeling of dexterity and quick dopamine rush reward and turns it into a bit of a slog, slashing and dashing, and the highlight of a single battle is instead turned into some hedonistic experience of right bumper combat the way it plays out currently, with you slashing and slashing and slashing again even when you do get items that raise up your ability to do damage. Ravenbound's roguelike elements are consistently displayed here, though, building hatred as you face enemies or absorb it to unlock treasures in the game world. This can increase enemies' power and their health and also corrupts card spots, making it harder for you to outfit your character, requiring you to complete whatever your mission objective is, and then that removes those hatreds for you to be able to get those items again. And dying is going to happen a lot, and when it does, new characters are rolled, and you can choose from all of the cards that you've got before. They're drawn into this spiritual vessel to the raven that you are. It's that death and return and death again that offers the roguelike gameplay. Because you are a raven, each battle on the ground as its avatar and each death doesn't affect the raven itself. He's the king of death anyway, consistently taking in the strengths that you give him as the avatar as you live and die in battle. And then dying, you're discarded for just another skinwalker, a bag of meat collected from the deathly and discarded things that the prior battles have offered. I like that. That fantasy feel is throughout the entire game. And that's mimicked by you taking on trolls, undead, men, and more mythical creatures. Based on Scandinavian folklore and a heavy mix of apparently depression and dread, the world of Ravenbound is something that you would expect to see in a mix of Valhalla, Phoenix Rising, and Kingdoms of Amalar, though there are no specific paths like that last example. Instead, it is just this massive open world of runes and rocks and vegetation. Graphically, the game's animations are difficult to read sometimes, especially in battle, and the camera can become its own enemy. And mixing those two together, as well as enemies that can take an inordinate amount of hits does make the game feel awkward. It's hard to read. It's like parsing audio with a 20 millisecond leg. Things feel unconnected until later you get more and more cards and start to collect the ability to, for example, stagger opponents. And slamming into them doesn't resolve into the enemy ignoring that move, but instead tripping and falling to the ground. It's unfortunate that, that doesn't show itself earlier on and that dodging and blocking don't really respectively look much like that, with blocking not using the shield, but instead instead just a glowing total shield around yourself despite you holding one, and dodging has you sliding around a little bit like you're on ice. Ravenbound consistently feels a bit at odds with itself. This is also replicated in the look. Now it looks its best when it's in flight. Ultimately, that is awesome, but it's disappointing when playing. It usually performs well at 4K with settings maxed. It's well over 60 FPS on the 3080. There is a heavy amount of pop-in. In the game's villages, places to go for rare healing to get some missions and sometimes talk to characters are filled with unmoving 
stationary NPCs, sometimes looking like they were frozen in place. And upon a game load, if you decide to go away from the game and come back, you load back into the avatar that you just started playing, and a lot of times enemies are just popping up around you, as well as NPCs. Also, the solid frame rate begins to stutter and stop and start, and some of the later locations or farther off locations you can fly to, especially with desert sands or in particular spots where the draw distance stretches farther than normal. And these are some pretty hefty stutters. The game's audio presentation isn't very lush either. Even with the rain and the wind coming down in sheets, this weird icy looking droplets that you see, it's got a very subdued sound to it. And no matter how you adjust the parameters, you can never really get it to fully envelop you. Musically, I did like it. A couple tracks aim to offer a substantial feeling of mystery and fantasy. The main track in particular offers this excellent off-kilter mix of wind and strings that strain strangely reminded me of Dying Light 2's main track as it plays through the various models and then moves along into something far more battle akin. Unfortunately, or maybe this case, fortunately, there isn't a lot of voice in the game. There is for the cutscene, but other than that, most of the characters are unvoiced in all ways. What about fun factor? How is it coming together so far? Ravenbound, it stymies itself in a number of areas, from the initial slogging through of the enemies to the sometimes not greatly explained mechanics to the feeling of the camera that might be manned by someone alternating between testing the best psychedelics and then the most potent uppers all within the same 30 minutes. It's a game that has trouble knowing what it wants to do with a climbing mechanic built in with a rappel for moving and doing some platforming, but an almost ungodly grip for the character's feet, letting you usually double jump up almost any mountain face and no fall damage of any kind. That makes the game become an odd wind sprint with no danger between enemies and needing to find shrines to the raven to transform back. That slog-like component begins and it hurts itself. Another element that has reared its ugly head here is the online-only component, even for a single-player game. The developers have stated that the way they want to do this requires you to have an account with them and be online all the time. Now, for many of us in the last two days, Steam has actually been having a couple issues. Reviewing this game with the online component of Steam, going up and down as well as the internet, switching to offline mode does not let you play this game at all in any way, shape, or form. You need an account to do so, which means effectively completely locked out. When playing Ravenbound, there were parts I enjoyed. The game offers a refreshing take on some stuff and that amazing atmosphere is the Raven throwing down avatars live and watching them live and die for you and basically lording above them on high, that geared me up. But the card system and the ability to gather these cards and play them with the next character always felt a little off, a little off-putting, and a little ill-fitting. The combat itself is loose enough to not feel like every single hit, death, or kill is on the player's shoulders either, and the online component doesn't do it any favors. So far, I would have to say to wait for a sale on this. The price wasn't given to me for this review, and I'm going to wait for that. But I'm also just waiting because I haven't got a chance to play it as much as I would like because I didn't have online for a little bit of time and couldn't actually experience the game at all. It doesn't really feel ready, though, even when I was playing it. There's a lot of parts of this that feel incredibly rough. So this is a title that I would say there are some things to like, but really go into it with a lot of eye towards some of the hazards that this one is offering. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope to have this updated in the next couple days, whether on the podcast or another video. If you like these, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Jeremy Penner, where I'll be giving you all the newest details on games, reviews, rumors, news, that kind of stuff. Follow me on Patreon. If I've saved you any money or warned you away from a crappy game, hey, throw a couple bucks into the Patreon because it does help the channel, especially with the YouTube algorithm being the giant beastly boss that it is. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.